And it's a Wednesday here, and while Zoom may say I'm Cam Martin, I am not. I'm Azara Ramirez, joined by Amina. We got Anthony, we got Lana, the normal crew. Aiden is somewhere. Um, T's and P's to Aiden. I hope he's okay. Um, you know, the end of the semester, we're, we're getting to there, everyone. Hopefully you survive. Uh, enjoy the air today. Uh, things like that. But before we get into business, we have a very special guest here. Uh, we have an electric ADJ. A man that was waiting outside the SCM doors today. A man wearing a yellow shirt. A man that has a mask on following COVID guidelines and is wearing glasses. Victor is here, our ADJ of the day. Woo! Victor! Awesome. Victor, give give the people a little bit of advice to start their morning before we get started on the show. Uh, drink coffee, and waking up in the morning isn't that bad. You become more productive, so do it. Early birds gets the worm. Get all the worms, everyone, yes. and more importantly, get your news here on the Morning Buzz, available on WMC ninety point three Upper Montclair. And Amina is the only human that can deliver it. So Amina, please. Give us the news report. Of course. So in national news, riders of a Brooklyn subway train were victims of a mass shooting Tuesday morning when an unidentified man donned a gas mask, opened a gas canister, and began firing into the smoky train car, hitting multiple people on the train and the subway platform. Ten people were shot and an additional 13 were injured via smoke inhalation, falling down, or panic attack. The NYPD identified a man named Frank James, 62 years old, as a person of interest. New York City agencies are offering a $50,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of the suspect. In state news, Republican State Senator Ed Durr says that he plans to introduce legislation to limit some of New Jersey's sexual education policies. Durr's bill would ban lesson plans on gender, gender identity and sexual orientation up to the fifth grade. It comes ahead of a new sexual education curriculum that is slated to begin in September in New Jersey schools. Durr's bill would also penalize teachers and allow parents to sue districts for violations. In local news, Montclair ends its 30 year long sister city relationship with the Russian city of Sharapovets in a four to three vote, citing Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Sharapovets was one of four Montclair sister cities around the globe. On March 11th, Spiller sent a letter via email and hard copy to the mayor saying that he was starting the process of withdrawing from the sister city relationship. As of April 5th, the mayor of Sharapovets has not responded. For the weather today, it is mostly cloudy with a high of 76 and a low of 47 with a humidity level of 69% and good air quality at 40. Thank you very much, Amina. And my favorite part is where you said the high is going to be 76 today. I'm so excited. Let's go, everyone. I am done with the winter. Uh, I think we should cancel it. That's what we should be canceling, everyone. Forget about the celebrities. Let's cancel the winter. Uh, anyways, Anthony, the sports world, I got to be honest, was on fire last night. And on fire, I mean in a good way because I am a basketball kind of guy. And play in tournament was a lot of fun to watch. Sports, sports world's always on fire. Always it's never on, on ice, okay? I, well, technically. It's hockey. never on ice. Hockey's on ice. Hockey's on ice. It's literally on it's ice. It's always on fire, though. Disney's on ice, the too. The news is always on fire. That's true. Anyways, yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Deliver sports news. <laughs> <laughs> so in sports news, another scandal, the never-ending saga of the Washington Commanders came out yesterday, as it appears that the team has broken multiple financial laws and they owe a substantial amount of money to visiting teams and season ticket holders. The U.S. House Oversight and Reform Committee released a 20-page letter detailing that the team used two sets of financial books to conceal revenue that ultimately went to ownership. The recently named commanders aren't new to controversy under Dan Snyder's ownership. With multiple accounts of sexual harassment and potential racist emails, this is the newest scandal to come out of our nation's capital. The NBA's play in tournament games tipped off last night with the seven, eight games from each conference. The Nets and the Cavaliers played in the first game with the Nets winning by a score of 115 to 108. Kyrie Irving had 34 points and 12 assists to edge out the Cavs. The Nets will now take on the second seeded Celtics in the first round, and the Cavs will take on the winner of the 9 10 game between the Hornets and the Hawks. On the Western Conference side of the bracket, the Clippers took on the Timberwolves for the first playing game. The Timberwolves took down the Clippers by a score of 109 104. 
Anthony Edwards led the charge for Minnesota with 30 points and five rebounds. The Timberwolves will now take on the Grizzlies in the first round. The Clippers will face the winner of the 9-10 game between the Pelicans and the Spurs. The New York Yankees beat the Toronto Blue Jays last night 4 to nothing. Nestor Cortez looked solid in four and a third innings of work to improve the Bombers to 3-2. and two. Aaron Hicks also added his first home run of the season. And the Mets beat their division rival Phillies last night 2 nothing. Brandon Nimmo teed off for his first home run of the young season. Tyler Mahiel tied the major league lead in wins last night with his second. And Edwin Diaz picked up his first save of the season. Ooh, thank you very much. I think that's a funny stat, though. Um, <laughs> uh, leads the league and wins or something with two. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's a young <laughs> season, but he already has two. And it's tied with two other guys. Two other guys have two wins? Let's get them Ws, everyone. Um, but, yeah, I got to say, before we go on to Brooklyn, uh, speaking of Brooklyn, actually, uh, the NBA games last night were a lot of fun. Distracted me from my essay last night. Shout out to the ant- annotated bibliography. Not sure what that entirely means. Uh, last night was a fever dream. Deep into the AM, it was disgusting, and I wish it never had to happen. But hey, that's the college life we signed up for. But Anthony, you briefly mentioned this earlier, as you know, the commanders are commanding. Uh, the U.S. House and Oversight Reform Committee is exploring a potential financial in properties within the Washington Commanders organization. The committee now wants a federal agency to get involved. And this report is coming from the Washington Post as the committee sent a 20-page letter to the Federal Trade Commission regarding allegations that the team may have withheld as much as $5 million in refundable deposits from the season ticket holders and that the team may have hidden cash that was to be shared by all NFL franchises. Former Washington Commanders employee Jason Friedman, who spent nearly a quarter century with the organization, told the committee that the team kept two sets of books and that one set of financial information underreported ticket revenue in the league. The process of intentionally allocating revenue in the wrong event was known, according to Friedman, as, quote, juice, with the team allegedly spreading revenue that would have been shared with the league to non-NFL events at FedEx Field. As bad as that sounds, it is separate from, you know, and even more <laughs> scams going on, uh, which is where they kept security deposits from season ticket holders. According to the letter, yet again, provided uh, from Friedman, quote, provided the committee with information and documents indicating that the commanders routinely withheld security deposits that should have been returned to customers who had purchased multi-year season tickets for specific seats, referred to as seat leases. And that term, executive director employee to establish roadblocks to prevent customers from obtaining the security deposits that were due, effectively allowing the team to retain that money. According to Friedman as well, these that practice at least ended in 2017. That is a lot going on. And um, here's the thing. This organization, uh, Anthony, you mentioned earlier yeah. as well, they have just been in a constant PR battle because they cannot seemingly do anything right. Yeah, they there, keep, yeah, keep No, there's uh, reports of sexual abuse going on, turmoil in, throughout the entire organization. You had sewage pipes blowing up, not blowing up, but like breaking in the middle of a game, pouring everywhere. Do the math what that means, everyone. Um, and it's just the NFL has seemingly done nothing. Like they hear all these allegations, all these reports, and yet Dan Snyder is still the owner of the team. Um, well, technically, he's not the owner. Huh? His, the, he, the, the, like the ownership of the team is in his wife's name, but like he's... I mean, like, come on. Exactly. It, it's, it's really ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it, like, you, like you said, Isaiah, all the things that have just been going on within the commander's organization with the name change, we talked about the cheerleaders, like the, the cheerleaders and the sexual harassment. Now, like the Gruden emails are coming out that he exchanged with... Uh, some of the Washington front office, it's just, it's a very bad look. And if I'm a Commanders fan, I, you got to start thinking about maybe this guy's got to get out. I, I hope they were thinking about a while ago. Um, uh, yeah, well, the but, first thing. But here's the thing. I think the only reason that the NFL hasn't really taken like a big, you know, attack on the Commanders yet is because, let's be honest, they haven't really affected the business in a sense, you know? People are still going to be buying tickets, all that stuff. But now that they're allegedly, this is all allegedly, guys, not factual, um, but there's a report that is you know, developing. Uh, they were withholding money from the rest of the NFL teams. So yeah. I think once a billionaire starts messing with another billionaire's money, 
that's when they feel like they can start, you know, taking action. But when there's a human element and, you know, people are actually hurt, they couldn't care less. But as soon as you start messing with their paychecks, of course, they're going to take action. And I, don't, I, I imagine, hopefully, that this team is forcefully put up for sale kind of deal with um, yeah. what happened with the Clippers not too long ago where I believe, was it Donald, Donald, Sterling? Sterling, Donald Sterling? Yeah, he had made like the racial comments and then he was forced to sell the team. Um, I would like to think that's the next step for the commanders, but I, I don't know how Dan Snyder, anytime you think Dan Snyder is out of Washington forever, somehow he's not. <laughs> and he's, yeah. it's like a 10 year run of, Dan Snyder should have been out of the NFL, but he still is here. So. He's he's had the, the the commanders now for I think twenty years. He, yeah. he bought him twenty years ago, and he's still going. Like I've heard, like just horrible things. Yeah, from that from that camp, and it, it's only a matter of time. Like they're counting the days. Like the whole like Sean Taylor thing. Remember the the season? Oh they had that God. whole. Uh, I think it was it was from the Gruden emails that that came out. They were between the Wash and Washington deleted like most of the emails after that came out. So yeah. you know that they had some some stuff in there that could potentially get them to lose a team. And right as, as soon as that story broke, they announced that Sean Taylor was getting his like number retired that that Sunday. Like very it was so rushed, right? Yeah, it was very quick though. It was so rushed. They sort of like disrespected it a little bit because Sean Taylor's one of the greatest safeties of all time. So they just sort of, and then like the whole ceremony was just ridiculous. Like it was barely even a ceremony because it was rushed oh come on you had jackson mahomes there dancing yeah, on the number exactly. it was hitting the whoa and whatever tiktok horrible. do these days it, it, like the, the way they treat their players the organization the people within their their front office it's just bad and, and dan snyder should be forced to, to sell the team yeah i 100 percent agree with you anthony are america's favorite easter candies races Different parts of the country have different preferences for Easter candy. And Instacart recently released data breaking down the sweets by state. Mm. New Jersey buys more Peeps marshmallow chicks than any other state. Ew. According to a survey <laughs> from Instacart. Are you get Peeps? America's 10 favorite Easter candies, according to Instacart, are number one, Cadbury Easter cream eggs, which are goaded. Love those. Number two, <laughs> Reese's peanut butter eggs. Amazing. I love them. How can you go wrong with Reese's? Number three, Starburst Easter jelly beans. Great. How do you not love jelly beans in your eggs on Easter? Awesome. Oh Cadbury chocolate mini eggs. Also a bar of Cadbury cream eggs. Great. Number five, Hershey milk chocolate kisses. How can you go wrong? Little, little, little dollops of chocolate. Eat it. It's, it's delicious. Number six, M&M's Easter milk chocolate candy. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but it sounds good. Number seven, Lint Milk Chocolate Bunny. Love chocolate bunnies. They're, they're, ma they're massive. Didn't we you just eat talk them about it? And they're good. <laughs> chocolate, bunny. chocolate bunnies <laughs> are fantastic. Number eight, Brax Jelly Bird Eggs. I hate those. They're, those are like, look, gobstoppers. They're terrible. <laughs> Number nine, Peeps Marshmallow Chicks. The worst candy ever made. If you like Peeps, you're a communist. Number 10. <laughs> Hershey's milk chocolate candy eggs. Fantastic. That's my list. Anthony, I um, feel personally attacked for number nine. Um, you like peeps? Yes, yes, I do. How do you? Okay, Victor, Lana, Amina, you actually like peeps. Yes. I've never seen a human actually eat a peep. I wait for this time of year horrible. every year. The horrible. What? They're just marshmallow covered in sugar. How do you not That's like That's disgusting. It? Listen, it's marshmallow already delicious. have sugar in them. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but marshmallows are only good when it's sandwiched in between two graham crackers and a Hershey bar. No. I, I'm not just going to eat marshmallows. You really eat marshmallows? I know. Exactly. No. Exactly. no. What like, are you you going to hide marshmallows from me, or I will just open eat the up whole bag. Yeah. Yes. No. For real? I love yeah. having like the mini ones. Mm. So I can just... You know what's actually a complete violation, though, is marshmallows and cereal. Ew. Like, uh, like uh, lucky, charms. Oh, lucky Charms. Lucky Charms are no, disgusting. No, 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 no. Stop it, stop it. They're actually Ew. Lucky Charms are delicious. They're Come so on. bad. They're magically disgusting. They're so <laughs> bad. They're so... Magically delicious for a reason. No. No. If that um, leprechaun stole my Lucky Charms, I'm chasing them down. Lucky you, the leprechaun is crying. You want to talk like a leprechaun? You really don't like Lucky Charms? No, leprechaun... No. <laughs> 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 leprechaun. <laughs> Leprechauns are disgusting. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, but Lucky Charms are like the texture, the taste. I just 
Ugh. Okay, I can agree because okay, I used to not like Lucky Charms just for the cereal part because it had no flavor. Ugh. But no. Other than that, the marshmallows. Even the marshmallows taste great. Yeah, I would trade the marshmallows in. I'd, I'd yeah, rather I'd just have like, the cereal. Yeah, the no, no. Just throw out the box. <laughs> throw it out. I wouldn't even give it to a starving human. I heard being. a question. That's how bad it is. I heard a question the other day. It was like, what is the best like milk cereal combination? Like, the, like mm. if you drink the milk from cereal afterwards, what's like the what best cereal wow, milk? Wow, that's a great question. I said Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but Lucky Charms. Pebbles, yeah. Lucky Charms is definitely up there. Crave no, is it's pretty not. Good, I think. Which like, one? Crave milk Crave. after the cereal. Crave? Yeah. You eat Crave? Yeah, I love Crave. Huh? Is that, you know that blue? What's box? the best cereal? Really? Come on. What's the best? So Crave. Crave? Oh, the, what's the, yours? the best cereal in general clearly is CTC. What? Excuse me? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I was. That's a, oh. Either that or HB Double O, you know? No, but I'm saying like the best <laughs> cereal milk ever Cinnamon Toast Crunch for sure. Lucky Charms and Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks? Apple Who Jacks. says Apple Jacks? I didn't even know they still Apple made Jacks that. are good. Come on. I thought they were done. Like, I've never. What commercial? are we doing? Apple yes, Jacks? that's Jamaican cinnamon guy and the apple. They <laughs> were the <laughs> best. The commercials were awesome. The commercials but are the better than the cereal. The cereal is so good, too. No. Apple no. cinnamon. Wait, cereal. Reese's Puff. Eat them up, eat them up, eat them up. Come on. Those, I like um, those, yeah, their milk's but... okay. <laughs> The cereal, not sorry. the milk, but the cereal. I don't know. Good. I feel like Reese's should just stick with candy. I'm not... You don't like Reese's Puffs? No. Come on. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I like the song, but not the, the song. Is a <laughs> What's banger. that there? That, that, that crunch? P, B, and C, O, sweetie with the crunch. Wrong. 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 Uh, boom. Been... Boom is the man. Say it. Say it. It's Reese's Puffs. Lena Butter Chocolate. Yeah, great one. Separate. When they come by, they make a morning time epic. Morning time epic. M -m 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 morning time. Okay, that's enough. That commercial <laughs> played every commercial break. For real. And I As sing it every time. That's true, though. I can't help but not sing it. Uh, it's good. It's, you know? Uh, wow. Good times here on the morning <laughs> bus, guys. Um, you know, anyways, very quickly. Top candy of all time before we head to a break. Oh, my gosh. Minus M and M's. M and M's. Sour Patch Kids. Sour. Uh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Sour Patch Kids. Oh, I don't feel good anymore. Yeah. Starburst is a close second, though. Ew, you like sour and sweet candies like that? Yeah. Ew. Come on. Uh, you nasty. Reese's peanut butter cups. That's fair. Uh, I don't know what to pick. I'm gonna say, you know, I'm gonna agree with you, Lana. I'm gonna rock with Reese's. Yeah. The what I don't like is the super stuff Reese's here on WMSC 90.3 for Montclair, uh, or the thin ones. It's just just pick think, regular. Reese's. I've only ever had the regular ones. I've never had. Yeah, the other ones are disgusting. Are we talking about the big cup? Yeah, I had that. It's too much. Um, it's way too much going on. I think. Wait, uh, am I wrong, Amina? <laughs> Well, what is that face? Of, I had to think about it because <laughs> I only ever had it once and I was like, let me just try it. But I kind of agree. I think mm -hmm. the ratio of peanut butter, I think they just can't get the taste right. No. Amina, aren't you allergic to nuts? Yes. Love what are, Amina, <laughs> stop. Okay. I haven't had a Reese cup in a while, though. All right. First but off, I still, first you know, off, know Amina, the taste. Amina, 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 Amina. We're not going to do this. Oh. We're not going to call it Reese's puff. All right. Reese's. Reese's. And on that note, we're going to take a break. Whatever. Because this is an assault. Uh, so stay tuned for the second hour of the Morning Buzz here on WMC 90.3 Upper Montclair. And who knows? Maybe even Victor is going to deliver the news. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, Lana, what can we do to pass time? I don't know what that voice is. Um, <laughs> we went over dude? this. Yeah. Enough with that. And, all right, Amina. Um, Lana, I guess you can go ahead and go, I guess. Isaiah, I thought you did a good job. That's Thanks, nice. Lana. You know what? I'm going to turn that frown upside down. Uh, Lana, I'm dying to know what we can watch in theaters and what we can play at home. Well, Harry Potter fans rejoice. Fantastic Ooh. Beasts, The Secret of Dumbledore comes out Friday in theaters and it is rated PG-13. Professor Albus Dumbledore knows the powerful dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald is moving to seize control of the wizarding world. Unable to stop him alone, he entrusts magic zoologist Newt Scamander to lead an intrepid team of wizards, witches, and one brave muggle baker 
on a dangerous <laughs> mission when they where they encounter old and new beasts and clash with Grindelwald's growing legion of followers. But with the stakes so high, how long can Dumbledore remain on the sidelines? It's a great question. How long can he remain on the sidelines? Uh, Anthony, you're a sports guy. How long do you expect him to be out on the sidelines for? Yeah, I expect uh, Dumbledore to be out at least five to six weeks. <laughs> Lower week strain. Awesome. Uh, so you guys are all Harry Potter people? Yes. yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, not really. Oh, Anthony I mean, says. I'm the only one. No, I'm not much of a Harry Potter guy no, either. Anthony. I've seen all the movies, though. Not on purpose, but. Uh, <laughs> the Fantastic Beast series, though, I'm not as into. Yeah. yeah. It's not as great as Harry Potter. That's true. interesting. Anthony, I mean, not Anthony. Victor, you're a fan of Harry yeah. Potter. Do you want to tell what Harry Potter means to you? And what do you think about Fantastic Beasts? Oh, well, what it means to me, that's a. That's a uh, difficult question but yeah I read the books I I even when I came here I went to see the the Harry Potter Broadway show like I'm a big big Harry Potter fan and Fantastic Beasts I have mixed emotions about it like I liked the first movie the second one was like you know meh I thought it could be better so I don't know what to expect from this third movie I hopefully you know they will get better from the original plot line they had in the second one so we'll see what happens I love uh, Jude Law as Albus Dumbledore. So I'm excited. I, I'm excited. Yeah. Excitement. Anyone else excited or not? Uh, I mean, like, I want to give mm. it like Fantastic Beast series a better chance. Okay. Because I feel like I haven't given it like a good enough chance. But is it you haven't given it a chance, or maybe it's just not clicking the way you want it to? I'm not sure. I think also what kind of put me off was when I first started with Fantastic Beast, I read the screenplay first before actually seeing the movie. Mm. I didn't really like reading the screenplay. Interesting. Huh. Amina, you're a fellow Potter. What do you think of this one? <laughs> what do you think of this one? <laughs> it's a lovely story. Um, kind, of, <laughs> kind of what Lana said. Like, I like the first one. Um, well, I feel bad saying it now because I'm not even thinking about it. I don't remember what happened in the Yikes. second one. But the first one I feel like was good, but I feel like it wasn't, I feel like I had high expectations for it and it didn't meet those high expectations, but it wasn't bad either. So I'll see the third one, okay. but I won't go in with those same expectations. Is this something you guys are going to watch in theaters or is it like, oh, I'll wait for HBO Max or something? Probably wait. Yeah, yeah HBO Max for sure. You know, yeah. teas and peas to Harry Potter. Anyways, what else can we watch? Um, Father of the Flies came out yesterday in theaters and it is not rated. A haunting tale of family life. A vulnerable young boy finds out his mother pushed out from the family home by a strange new woman and he must confront the terrifying supernatural forces that seem to move in with her. A troubled father brings home a new woman, but something is strange about her. What is this haunting supernatural force and what does it want? Ooh, wow. she a vampire is that, what, is that what's going on vampire. i have absolutely no idea interesting well Speaking. i'm thinking she predictions for this movie i imagine she is haunted by a demon <laughs> uh and she tries to eat the the boy and then the oh boy's like God. stop it so wait, then, so the boy's like hansel and gretel and then it's like the witch yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. like that yeah. that kind of vibe okay. that's what i'm getting from. Right. Yeah, that's a good prediction i think Anyone, anyone want to make a bold prediction for Father of Flies? The father is the real monster. Uh, the woman's communist. just normal. The woman's just normal. She's being, like, controlled by the father. You think so? Okay. That's I know nothing monster. about this movie except for this little description. I'm already <laughs> making I, assumptions on what's going on. I was going to say something similar, but opposite. I was going to say I think it could be the father since it's Father of the Flies, but yeah. I feel like mm. he basically created this demonic woman who to get rid of the actual mother and the boy is going to be the one to find out and save the day. Oh. I have like a morbid theory. Okay, go for I it. Think like I don't know we know nothing about this. Father story. of flies. <laughs> I think the father is going to die. That's why he's father of flies, because he's dead and, you know, rotting. And then the flies oh. are coming out of him. So, yeah, that's my theory. Yeah. You know, that's it. Okay. Here's my other theory. The father is actually the new woman as well. And he's oh, playing both so it's roles. Like psycho. Yeah. Psycho. Yeah. Oh, Make this is your next movie, Lana. Uh, Maybe I will. I want my credits 
uh, please put me at the end. I will definitely. Um, this is do gonna that be out. a hit. This is gonna be the next big movie, guys. Uh, what else we got, Lana? Uh, finally, I added this because it only gave me this one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to the World's Fair. Comes out Friday in theaters, and it is also not rated. A teenage girl becomes immersed in an online role-playing game. That, that sounds very. That, interesting. That's it. That sounds very interesting. <laughs> that's all I they gave just me. Watch that. I don't know. Wow. That, I think that is the most likely thing I watch out of the three movies. Guys. We're all going to the World's Fair. <laughs> but we're all you have going any to watch. For we're, all what? <laughs> we're all going to watch. We're all going to the World's Fair. My prediction for this movie is actually the teenage girl is a streamer, and that's literally it. There's no other storyline. She's just streaming, and it's an ex- it's a experimental movie for her YouTube channel that she got into oh, the, for the YouTube channel <laughs> for, for the views. Whole, plot, whole life. <laughs> Maybe the movie's just a stream, and instead of being like one exactly, hour, two hours, yes. it's like I how mean, much time do they take. She's like, thanks for the dono, guys. Stream. Thanks for the dono. I just want to know when. <laughs> Follow me on the socials. Is she live streaming going to the World's <laughs> Fair? Yes. <laughs> it's like five hours. Yeah. It's a life vlog, but live stream for the rest of her life. <laughs> um. All right. So that's definitely an interesting movie. Um. Mm-hmm. As much as I love movies, sometimes I'd like to wind down and play a couple of video games. What do we got, Lana? Uh, well, we got some interesting picks this week. Um, eFootball 2022. Let's go! 2022 comes out Thursday for the PS5, Xbox Series X, S, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And Cat Cafe Manager comes out yes. <laughs> Thursday for the Switch and PC. Cat say that Cafe right Manager. Face. Like, honestly, it sounds interestingly fun. Right. I'm not saying that I would play uh-huh. it. Okay, it's giving like what Diner is, Dash. Is it like Animal Crossing? Is that what it is? I have absolutely no idea. The, the website does not give me descriptions. Cat Cafe Manager. It, what is a cat cafe? Um, so a cat cafe normally is like it's a cafe with like cats. So you bring in your cat kids. to a coffee oh, place? I found yeah, it. Yeah, like people like find it like soothing. Mm. What? I don't know. I don't know. You wouldn't I don't want a cat, cat to lay cat on your cat. lap while you're just drinking a cup of coffee. I just have, no. if I do that at my house. I lit, yeah, that happens. I could do that. I could do that at my house. And in most cases, it's actually more annoying um, <laughs> than helpful. Um, I love it when my cat does that. I like it, but sometimes, like when you got your laptop on, like my cat loves to just lay on laptops for some reason. So anytime, like I'm on my bed trying to type, we'll be like, "All right, let me try to pop on." Oh. So it's very unfair. <laughs> what is it? It's, it's literally game. look at that. That's the game. Oh no. Yeah. I don't know if you can share that with the, uh, the people mm. on Facebook, but like. Oh, uh, let me let me be producer then. Oh, my mom just messaged in. The I cats say, that are at the oh, cat yeah. cafes are all up for adoption too. Oh, uh, oh now now it's actually nice. I take back everything yeah. I said about the cat yeah, cafe. It, it probably still smells but, yeah, like this is giving diner dad <laughs> the bad stuff. <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> just enjoy the cat. It's okay? <laughs> just enjoy the it's cat. a place where you like drink coffee and eat like food, and then there's just a bunch of cats. I don't know. Hey everyone, I thought you were cat a cat cafe. Person. I like cats, but it's just uh, like I don't. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Cat cafe ain't it, guys. I'm this, sorry. This, this game just, looks like complete it. dog water. Um, <laughs> I was surprised it wasn't a mobile game. It's actually coming out like on the Switch. It looks like a mobile game. It really right. does. I'm surprised. Cat cafe manager. Shame. I don't think he would do too. Good Lana is going game. to be running a cat cafe in a few years. Is that the goal? Uh, no, it is not. I like <laughs> like cats. I love love cats i have two and oh. i would go to a cat cafe but i don't know mm. if i'd want to run one because business sounds scary to me <laughs> business is booming everyone interestingly enough actually e-football is free to play everyone um you know eventually one day i'll play video games again uh i think my return date is expected for uh ncaa football whenever it comes back i will disappear for like three that's months. what 2020 i think i don't know whenever it happens it's gonna be a great day in my life yeah. um, oh and when we say football i think we mean soccer yeah, yeah. yeah. Football, yeah. Soccer. soccer football messy oh or that was a good one barcelona real madrid <laughs> you don't like barcelona <laughs> oh, oh wow he actually does references um ronaldo, ronaldo everyone Su- i don't know soccer so i don't know any of this um yeah. amina try to name one soccer player that isn't messy or ronaldo very quickly before we head to a break um mm-hmm. james yeah 
James Jinx. Harden. Uh, <laughs> guys, Jinx. I know I Bend know. It Like Beckham. Bend It Like Beckham. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, guys. We're going to probably play a song. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, but stay tuned for the Morning Buzz. We're going to talk about a lot of other things, stuff, and uh, more soccer. Just kidding. That's the last soccer, I promise. Bye. <laughs>